The third season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel makes its grand entrance on December 6th, and this time Midge and Susie are going across the U.S. on a big old tour. So put on your pearls and start talking at Amy Sherman Palladino speed because we're about to refresh you on seasons one and two. This is the IMDb cheat sheet for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. How the hell have you been all my life? If you haven't seen seasons one or two, you should quickly exit stage left. Spoilers ahead in three, two, one. It's 1958 in New York City, and Miriam Maisel, aka Midge, appears to have the perfect life, but is married to Joel, a wisecracking man baby who dreams of leaving his job as a VP of Triborough Plastics for the most unstable career of all time stand up comedy. Oh, yeah, and he also steals all his jokes from other comedians. What a catch! No, not steals, borrows. No big deal. One night after bombing at a comedy club called The Gaslight, Joel leaves Midge for his secretary Penny Pan, ugh, Penny, and does so just in time to be atoned of his sins on Yom Kippur. I'm not happy. Nobody's happy, it's Yom Kippur. After chugging a whole bunch of wine, Midge staggers back to The Gaslight, rants hilariously about Penny's dumb name, and the audience loves it. Oh, she also gets arrested for flashing the crowd. <laughs> Susie Meyerson, the disgruntled booker from The Gaslight, bails Midge out of jail, convinces her to pursue stand-up comedy, and becomes her manager, because that's how deals were done in the 50s. Midge also befriends legendary comedian Lenny Bruce when she gets arrested, and now they're paddy wagon pals. It was a big night. If you need any help finding a lawyer, I've got a drawer full of cards. Just don't tell anyone you know where I am. Midge and her kids move in with her parents, Abe and Rose, who have no idea their daughter is flashing weirdos in comedy clubs. So this should go well. And it's a secret. Susie goes to see Harry Drake, an uber-successful comedy manager, and begs him to allow Midge to open for his biggest star, Sophie Lennon. She's a wild comedian that claims to be from Queens. In Queens, we got a neighborhood called Flushing, which isn't a name so much as a suggestion for what to do at the place. Midge meets Sophie at her massive mansion and discovers she's about as wild as Howdy Doody, and she's actually from Ann Arbor, Michigan. But it's not all bad, as Midge walks away with a free fur coat. How should I get it back to her? She's worn it twice. It's yours now. While performing later that night, Midge outs Sophie as a fraud, infuriating Harry and potentially destroying her and Susie's careers. You're dead in this business, you hear me? Since her career might be going down the toilet, Midge decides to give Joel and their marriage another shot, because maybe he's not as awful as we think? I wonder how Abe feels about this. I'm fine. In a Hail Mary attempt to save their careers, Susie convinces Lenny Bruce to do a free show with Midge at the Gaslight, which draws a huge crowd. Unfortunately, it also draws a drunken Joel who stumbles in and discovers that his wife is way funnier than he is and that her entire set is about him. All I've got is a wedding ring and two kids who call him daddy. <laughs> Even though Joel isn't thrilled, the crowd loves it. Now on to season two. America, here we come. After the show with Lenny Bruce, Joel realizes he can't stand the heat of dating a comedian and lets things fizzle out with Midge once again. Are we shocked? I think it would be better to have a little space right now. Feeling underappreciated by her family, Midge's mother Rose skedaddles to Paris to embrace her university days, but is charmed into returning to New York by a beret-wearing, pipe-smoking Abe Wiseman. You go, Abe! Wow, oh, Papa, congratulations! Oh, thank you very much. Oh. Midge and her newly reunited family head to the Catskills for the summer, and Susie, being the mega manager she is, follows them to book local shows for her one and only client, all while developing a deep fondness for plungers. All I have to do is walk around holding this thing, and everyone thinks I work here. It's genius. While on vacation, Midge starts dating a handsome doctor named Benjamin, who looks remarkably like a superhero. Weird. One night while Midge is performing at a club in the Catskills, she also sees a familiar mustache in the audience. Papa. And that mustache belongs to Abe. But instead of blowing up about his daughter's secret profession, he does some bizarre morning aerobics and conspires with Midge to wait for the right time to break the news to Rose. I'll let you know when the time is right. And that time is Yom Kippur, back in Manhattan. At a table of family, friends, and her rabbi, Midge reveals she's a stand-up comedian, and things get a little uncomfortable. Maybe I should be going. Susie and Midge go on a short but eventful tour of the East Coast, where Susie gets a face full of bedbugs, Midge accidentally reveals top-secret information about Abe's job that eventually gets his project canceled, and a club catches on fire during a performance. Thank you, good night, to catch on fire! Stop, drop, and roll! In a stroke of good luck, Susie gets Midge a spot on a telethon, but her old arch-enemy Sophie, not from Queens Lennon, is also performing and tries to sabotage Midge by getting her pushed to the last and worst time slot of the night. Why didn't she just kick us out altogether? Because she's a sadist. Susie bursts into Sophie's dressing room, threatening her to stay away from her client while Midge meets singer Shy Baldwin in the ladies' bathroom. What are you doing in there, sir? You guys have the bigger mirrors. Always smells better, too. Later, Midge gives an amazing performance in the telethon, and her friends, family, Joel, and even Shy, ladies' bathroom Baldwin absolutely love it. Shy loves it so much that he asks her to go on a six-month tour as his opening act, and without even thinking, Midge says, Oh my god, 
Yes. There we have a deal, little Miss Mouthy. Because she's going on tour, Midge decides to end her fast-moving relationship with Benjamin. Meanwhile, Susie gets an unexpected offer from Sophie Lennon and a fur coat. I want you to be my manager. Inspired by Midge's performance and the fact that he was forced out of his family business, Joel decides to follow his brand new dream of owning a nightclub. Geez, I wonder who will perform there. My girl's name is Maisel. I'll tell Margie to slot her in. Good deal. Now you're ready for all the wisecracking shenanigans in Season 3, which drops on Amazon Prime December 6th. Ooh, a great audience, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for me. My name is Mrs. Maisel. Thank you and good night! <laughs> <laughs>